Olympic champion leading out the Hungarians, Aaron Zilagi from Tamás Desi, Andras Zatmari and Zanad Gemesi. What a team this is. Got the silver last year, losing out to Korea in the final, 45-37. They look really sharp today. It's time for the Koreans to come out. Oh Sanguk followed by Gubon Gil. Kim Juno is the third in the lineup, and Hahan Sol is the reserve this evening. He'll be sitting on the bench. And uh, it will be Tamas Deshi in reserve for the Hungarians. The two men on the left are the, the judges that will share the duties on the calls. Luigi Martellotti from Italy and Vassal Melenchev of Bulgaria. They're assisted by Argentina's Adriana Atacoen and Japan's Sasada Kenichi. Team huddles. And then the high fives. These teams know each other so well. Korea, the champions in Cairo 12 months ago, and the Olympic champions in Tokyo at the delayed Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. Hungary got the bronze back then, but starting for the Hungarians will be Andras Zatmari, and he'll go up against Oh Sang Guk. They're building up the atmosphere here as O oh from Daejeon in Korea. It's ready to face the man from Budapest, Andras Zatmari. It is, of course, time to fasten your seatbelts. It's the men's team Sabre World Championship final. Vassal Melenchus gets us underway, and it, it's Andras Satmari straight out of the blocks. Well, Satmari went looking for the blade on that occasion, so the right of way goes with Osan Guk. For those of you, I'm sure there's very few of it, but those of you who don't know much about this weapon, it's a, the only cutting weapon of the three fencing swords. Target area is everything above the waist, including the head. And the referee calls the right of way. He or she decides the attacking fencer. If you're being attacked, there are two options. Well, there's three, you get hit, you don't want to do that. You want to run away, make miss with your feet, or use your blade to block out your opponent's sword. And if you do either of those two things, it's your turn to attack. Attack for O every day of the week. Again, Zatmari trying to find the blade. He's trying to hit his opponent's blade, but O Sankuk very quickly changes line. And again, just sharper off the line, the Korean. Ah, 
A great final para riposte there. Blocked out. Finally made it work, but did not land the riposte in time. Blocked the sword out. Well, just continuous attack from the right, and uh, Zatmari knows it. Way too early to call this right now. This one's going to build and build. As we move into the second of nine bouts, Aaron Zalagi taking on Gubon Gil. Zalagi, a three time Olympic champion. London 2012, Rio 2016, Tokyo 2020. Beautiful stuff from Slaggy using his feet there to just step away from the attack. I think we just got a glimpse of Osan Guk with his sock rolled down. A rather nasty bruise on his leg. So again, a slight, the slightest of hesitations off the line from Silagi. And Osan Guk, sorry, Guk on Bon Gil gets the right of way. Silagi on the long attack. And he goes low. Can't understand why he didn't hit. Let's see the replay. The sword goes below the jacket. Oh, no, it hit the jacket. And in fact, Gubon Gill acknowledged the hit, but no light came up on the scoring apparatus. So there's uh, some kind of technical error now. And that long attack was clearly Zilagi's, and from the replay, you saw that he hit the jacket. And no light came up. So the technicians run out and replace the spool, which is the uh, part of the equipment that connects the fencer's sword to the scoring apparatus. You see clearly the body being hit, the through cut across the belly. And to work so hard to get that hit and for the light not to come up, it's a bit heart-wrenching. Well, they're going for uh, the sledgehammer approach here, let's call it that. Uh, they decided rather than find out where the problem is, they're going to just replace everything. Body wire, sabre was working. It didn't, wouldn't have affected that earthing effectively on the uh, jacket. So body wire changed, spool changed. They probably got two ground leads, maybe even three ground leads, running from the scoring apparatus to the spool. They probably right, replace that as well. Oh, yes. Test, and we want to see a green and a red light here. And we do. Bit unfortunate for Zilagi, but he's got to brush that one off. And get his mind back in the game. So a good setup there from Silagi. He waited for Gu to try and look for his blade. As soon as he'd done that, lost the right away. And Silagi goes in. This time, Silagi off the line fast. He is learnt straight away. Cannot hesitate if he's going to go out on the attack. He's just got to get out there and uh, premeditated attack off the line. Well, the blade is met here. The blade is met here. Now, it was clear that Zilagi was looking for the power of post, but was Gu looking for the beat? No, he wasn't. So, good call, Vasil Lenchev. And there was the meeting of the blade. And that's what nicked the right away.
Went looking for the power, he didn't find it this time, Salagi, so Gu levels up. Already starting to build this one. So a card given to Gubon Gil. He thought that Slaggy had started early, so stop the fight. Did Slaggy hadn't started early, so Gubon Gil gets a card for unnecessarily stopping the fight. And to rub salt into the wound, Slaggy just comes off the line and attacks him. It's a big first step into the middle from Gubon Gil. And uh, we get our first video review of this bout. Gubon Gil thinks he's picked up the blade somewhere in this. Very difficult to see on the video. That's all that check with his back to us. Consulting with Luigi Martellotti, the Italian on the video for this fight. And the hit stands. So didn't separate the attacks that time. And forcing the attack through. Sweeping up the body. You're seeing that a lot more in Sabre now. And the attack goes straight through that time, and it's acknowledged by Gubon Gil. So a 6 4 victory for Silagi in terms of the bounce score. Andras Desi, the Hungarian coach, happy with the. Uh, the performance of Aaron Zalagi in his first match of three. Coming up now for the third bout, Janad Gamesi goes up against Kim Junho. Got to be thinking that this is one of the fights the Koreans may be targeting. I want to try and get a big points haul here against the lowest ranked Hungarian. Messi just today has been fencing out of his skin. He's a great team fencer. Going into the middle, eyes open, has a look and decides that he's going to close the distance for me. Kim had the uh, right of way there and pulled out of his attack. Luigi Martellotti going to have a look at the video here. Sensible to do so if you're not 100% sure. The question here for me is whether Gimesi stops. Doesn't look like it. My gut tells me that that's the Hungarian's hit. Let's see what the uh, professional referee says. So preparation, he did call it as a, a preparation from Gimesi. Didn't look to me like he stopped moving forwards, but perhaps his sword arm stopped. Well, the Vim and Vigo returns to the Nico Arena. Kim Jano, electric since losing the first hit. Beautiful power across, though. And if you watch this, we might see it again. Here we go. He shows that line. He puts his sword all the way down, Gimesi. He shows the head, and that's what Kim went for. But it was a trap by Gimesi, and he was ready to take that parry. Gimesi with the right of way, lands the long attack. At least 70% of the time in men's sabre. If you get on a long attack, and by that I mean more than two steps before you do your lunge, you're going to score like I say, 70% of the time. Same as the first hit. 
Kim Juno pulling out of his attack. He just went looking for the blade when he had the right of way. He could have gone straight to target there and he would have got the hit. Oh, now, attack is parried, riposte, I think, is parried. So, Gamesi gets the attack on. It's blocked out by Kim, but he was so sharp with a counter parry. Watch this, block, block, into that guard. And Gamesi gets the Hungarians to the line of 15, a third of the way through the match. Another 5-4 five, fight for the Hungarian fencers. Second appearance of uh, both Zatmari and Gu now. Should be an interesting one, Gu. Went 6-4 down to Silagi. Now he faces his teammate. And uh, a beautiful block repast. Stepped into the middle, eyes open, stopped. Lured the attack on and blocked it out. Tried the same thing again, didn't work. Gu on the long attack. And uh, just a little look down there to see if uh, that was given as a one-time attack. You'll see here, it's the last second change of line. But got the hit coming low underneath the parry. The card shown there to Gugon Gil. The attack given as no from Zatmari and uh, a challenge from the Hungarian. Video reviewed already. Usually that means the hit is going to remain as it was given. Attack. No. Attack. Push. One. And that's exactly the case. On guard. Prêt. Allez. Attack. Push. One. Oh, that is something special there. Goose attack all the way, but he was stopped in his tracks by that stop cut around the side. So delicately placed on as well. Wonderful oh, hit. And now the counter block. So if you counter attack, you haven't got the right of way. So you not only have to hit your opponent, but you also have to stop them from hitting you. So it's a very quick snatch out of the wrist. And then the block, two beauties in a row from Andras Satmari. They both step into the middle, both step out. And it's Gu that starts earlier. In fact, Zatmari went in search of the blade a little bit. No video, no video. You already asked. Attack push, one. On guard. This is a tight call. Martellotti's gone to look at the video. Hasn't been asked by either fencer, but uh, the referees can go at any point to go and have a look at the video if they're not sure. Oh, 
decision looks like it's been made. Yeah. Both of them stopped, but it was given for Zap Mari. Starting quicker, responding faster. And that now a 5-3 victory for the Hungarians. And it's a uh, like Messi coming on. And he'll go up against Osanguk. Another one the Koreans will be targeting. Right-hander is 36 years old, has 10 years on Osanguk. In the meantime, we saw that uh, Kim Jano was down on the uh, ground in that, during that fight, getting some ice treatment on his leg. Stop cut, counter action or counter block, I think it probably was in the end uh, from Osanguk. We'll get to see it here. Gets the uh, stop cut on the head and then blocks out his opponent. Now steals the right of way with distance, steps away from the attack before picking up the right of way, making miss and then having his turn and landing. Needed that. Messi. He's making, making O work super hard here. Salagi coming on next for the Hungarians. The Koreans want to sneak into the lead here. There is Aaron Salagi passing on. A bit of instruction. Coach Wu, Hongu Young, another attack and parity restored. Two away from the target score of 25, and this is exactly what the doctor ordered. If you are of Korean persuasion. Thank you. 
Well, what a turnaround for the Koreans. Certainly would have been in their minds. This is the idea against Gimesi. But nine points he scored to three to turn this one around. Like I say, the Triple Olympic champion comes on next, Aaron Zizlaghi, going up against Kim Jano that uh, looked like he was having some treatment on a, a hit by the looks of things to the leg. It would have been accidental, of course. And up. Time for up. the Hungarians up. to make a fight back. Uh, and Zizlaghi uh, straight uh, out uh, of the uh, blocks. The referee actually gave that the other way. That's on Milenchev. He is, I'd say, at the moment, the premier sabre judge in the world. What's he spotted here? Do you think it's Parapost or is it? Does he think the first action's missed? There seems to be one clean action. So I can only imagine he thought there was a meeting of the blades in the middle. It's what the video is for. Yeah, it's what the appeal system's for. Yeah. Good call. Good call all round, in fact. A good call from uh, Zilagi to ask the referee to go for it and a good call from the referee to change his mind. And uh, just like that, two in a row from Zilagi. And we're back to level pegging. Picked up the blades, Zilagi, for me. So, saying that he does get the right of way, but he stops in his attack. He's asked for another video here. Now, because he had his, his appeal upheld last time, he keeps that one call that each fencer gets in each bout. So he's asked the referee to go and have a look at this again, and fortunately, we get to see it as well. So there's the beat of the blade, and he has one step back afterwards, and I think that's why Vasil Milenchev is saying, I'm sure. Freeze the fair de gauche. Attack one back, stop, attack the drop, push, yes. Yeah. One step back, one. Yeah, there you go, he said it there. One step back, he took the beat, took one step back. Loses the right of way. Attack, push, one. And now it's the Koreans' turn uh, to call for the video. Uh, while well, we'll have a look at this one. W w Vasil Milenchev describes Sabre refereeing. He says it's easy. You just have to be able to count to two. First is one, you, who's got the right of way. And two, do they hit or do they make a mistake? If they make a mistake, you start counting to one with the other person. <laughs> very, very simply put. Tongue in cheek, of course. And it was another good call on the video this time from Kim Jano. Both doing the same thing. That was what the referee said then in French. Now. The line misses. It was the right of way for Silagi. Sticks his arm out. This is the right of way, even though he's going backwards. But then there's a slight bending of the arm. He actually said that the line passed. So the attack switches over to the other side. Starting to show signs. I'm running out of steam here. Uh. 
He's certainly showing signs of frustration, that is for sure. And Salaki gets another one. Remember, the Koreans came into this fight two points up. Sanguk looking on, Kenjo just trying to take a bit of a breather at the moment. And gets the Koreans over the line. And in the end, pans out to be not a bad leg from Korea. Could have been an awful lot worse. Only four for Silagi. But Kenjo doesn't look 100%. And he's got one more match to go. If the Koreans are thinking about making a substitution, they're going to have to do it right now. So up steps uh, Sanad Kamesi for his third and final fight. And he's taking on Gubon Gil. We come into the final leg of uh, this gold medal match in the men's team sabre at the world championships of 2023 koreans had just pulled away two fights ago well, that's a pickup from sanad kamesi is Kim Jano getting some treatment. So the treatment alone suggests that they're not going to make the substitution of the Koreans. Koreans need Gimesi to put everything on the line here. So good call from Gimesi. He can get to 33 or 34. He's done his job, but at the moment, he's looking like he could go all the way and turn this one around again. On the attack, though, Gubon Gil parried. Now, does, does Jemesi step over the back line before landing the hit? We've got to stay within the 14-metre piece. There's the parry, and he does. He's gone over the line. And that means hits annulled from Gemesi, and Gubon Gil gets a hit by virtue of the fact that he's crossed over the line. And that is exactly what has happened on review. Can't leave the back of the piece with both feet. The 
Messi just having a little think about this. A little reset. Yeah, and uh, went looking for the blade that time, Messi. Uh, Gu did his job, went straight to target, saw what was going on, saw there was an opportunity, and took it. Again, Di Messi stops. Is that given as parry or post? Uh, for me, on first sight, it looked like Di Messi had stepped into the middle, stopped, and Gu just kept coming. Now, does, the only explanation here is that Gu went looking for the blade. And uh, if we're lucky, well, there we go. We're going to get the uh, video replay in 30% speed. So let's see. So there's the stop. Oh, big hit as well from uh, Gubon Gil. I mean, looks like he's changing line to me rather than trying to take the blade, but his elbow does bend quite a lot. And they are both having a discussion, Martellotti and Melenchev. Cancel the touch, red card, hit with guard. There you go. It was a big hit. And uh, the Korean gets a red card for unsporting behavior. I mean, it's not violence per se, because he didn't do it deliberately, but the guard went into the mask, and that's not allowed. I'm sure it was by accident. But still, rules are rules. Red card means a point for Jimessi, just to be clear. Nervy moments for Korea and their coach Won Wu Yong, and that nerve getting nervier still. Messi fired up now. Gu perhaps a little rattled, wasn't expecting the red card. Yeah, the long attack from the Korean. Messi ran out of space, conscious of stepping over the line already once in this bout. Decided just to step in with a counter. Well, he's been consistent, Martellotti, with giving those. Both stop in the middle. And Messi's the one piling forwards afterwards. This is a tight one. Martellotti goes to the video again of his own choice. And so Melenchev in support. So the Korean gets over the line. 33, not too bad for Gomesi, scores six in that fight. Five for Gu. So Gu finishes on a minus two indicator, which means in the three fights he's had, he's had two more hits scored on him than he scored himself. Gomesi finishes on a minus four as we go to the penultimate fight, and Zatmari of Hungary takes on Kim of Korea, the world number five and world number 10 going up against each other. Plenty of but the Korean team are here in support of their men's sabreurs. And they hold a two point lead at this stage. Is that Mari's want, gonna want to turn this one around here? Parry riposte though from Kim Jano, he knew what was coming or he predicted what was coming, I should say. Stepped into the middle, lured the attack, blocked it out. Four more to go for him to get to the target of 40 in leg number eight of nine. And this time, uses distance, makes the opponent miss, and then chases down after them. And Zalagi looking on, he wants Zatmari to score a few hits here to give him a chance against Osangook. 
And attack given to the left to Zapmari. And uh, Kim Jun Ho calls for a video review. Another one. Well, that was a good call from Kim Jano. Decision changed, and it's a five point lead for the Koreans now. So is Kim Jano going to call for another video here? Referee's given that as attack to Zatmari. So sticks with the decision. Para repost. So Zatmari working on distance. He's just opening up the fight a little bit to create the opportunity to do a slightly longer attack. To me, it needs at least two more. I think either team can be trailing by okay. two going into the last match, and their anchor man could turn it around. <laughs> Another attack from Satmari. He's got Kim Jono thinking here, and it's, the thinking time is extended for him. And so he's not necessarily executing perfectly. It looked like he decided he was going to do a trap there and make miss with his feet, but uh, he didn't step away far enough. Out of the line, but Samari avoids the attack uh, with his feet using distance, and now we are level pegging. I don't think we can call this one now until we get to the last match. Even if one of them was to go on and score the next two points unanswered, both Osanguk and Aaron Zilagi have the ability to turn around a two-point deficit. And now we've got Kim Jano, who has been struggling since fight number one, down on the piste. And they're looking for a little bit of, well, are they gonna, looking at a medical timeout. Osan Guk was looking on a little concerned for his teammate. Magic spray being applied.
So back underway straight away. Kim Jong Ho didn't need much of a medical break, or didn't need a medical break at all. Just a bit of magic spray. Uh, but uh, Satmari's on a roll here. So 39 apiece. Whoever gets on the long attack is getting it. I'm not sure we've seen one missed apart from the one that Zalagi didn't get because the equipment failed early on in the fight. Oh, early on in the match, I'd say the first, the first match, I believe. Both do the same thing. Both step in, step back, and then go after each other. So it doesn't separate. Uh, The call, but now we've had an appeal from one of the fences. I'd love to tell you who it was, but a photographer's just stood up right in front of me. <laughs> Which makes my view a little difficult. The first one goes into the guard from Kim Jano, and it's a para past, and this one's been turned around again. Seven points for Andra Satmari. Just the four for Kim Jano, but looked a little worse for wear. And that's what it means to Satmari. He's done his job here, finishes on a plus seven indicator, outscoring his three opponents by seven hits as we go to the anchor leg. And Aaron Silagi, 33-year-old, world number two, takes on Oh Sang-Guk, the 26-year-old. Kim Jano getting that treatment. He's strapped up by the looks of things. And Silagi comes out of the blocks super fast and scores the first hit. Korea won this one. Last year at the World Championships in Cairo. Hungary seeking revenge. Well, worth mentioning right now that uh, this is a battle not only for the world title, but for the top of the Olympic qualification standings. Whoever wins it is going to lead the Olympic standings. And we have another video appeal here. It can only be from Osanguk. So he looked at the video and now Osanguk has no video appeals left. This time it's the other way around and uh, Silagi called for preparing. Nice long attack from Osanguk, really stretched his arm out there to reach the retreating Silagi. He just clipped him underneath the arm. Osanguk with the right away at the moment. But he doesn't finish his attack, and there was a fraction of a second that Silagi capitalized on to nick the point. 
awareness to be able to run backwards 100 miles an hour, stop dead on the line, and then change direction if the opportunity presents itself is something pretty special. My mistake. I got it. On. Just the slightest of retractions, the arm from Tulagi. It's enough to persuade the referee to give it to Osanguk. And uh, Salagi called for a review of that one. And now Niederfenser has an appeal left. Hungary with the slightest of advantages. Tight one. This is going to be so close now. They're both going to appeal for everything in the middle. The attack looks like it went through to me, but uh, actually the referee says it missed. So Oh Sanguk had the right of way, but he misses. You see, it go, the sword goes up and he hasn't hit the target. What a spot in real time from Vasil Melenchev. The right of way going to the Hungarian. Hungary one point away from the World Championship gold medal in the men's team sabre. Oh, Sanguk now has the right of way and he chases down the long attack. Oh, my goodness me, what a way to do it! Zilagi was dead in the water, just clung on to the end of the piece, retreated away, and again, Oh, Sanguk just didn't finish his attack. Zilagi changes direction at 100 miles an hour and goes out on the attack to take the world title. There is going to be a review of the referee's decision. He just wants to check that Zilagi didn't go over the back line, I think. And that is that. Hungary have done it in an absolute thriller here in the Allianz Mico Arena in Milan at the 2023 Fencing World Championships. What a way to do it as well. What a great hit to finish off. A great fight. Hungary the new world champions of men's Team Sabre. Oh, just look at this. Zilagi coming towards us, hits the back line, stops. Oh, Sanguk, I, I think he froze. He just didn't finish his attack. You'll see it better here. It's O's all the way, this one all the way and he just went one step too early and then frantically running away but Zilagi knew he had it what a way to win the world title and oh desperate desperately trying to get away realizes he can't he hasn't got the balance sticks out his arm hoping in all hope that he just gets in one light counter attack but you're not going to get those often against Aaron Zilagi Triple world champion anchoring the Hungarians to the world title. Uh, what an absolutely spectacular way to finish this first night of the team competition here at the 2023 World Championships. Confirmation then that Hungary have done it 45 42 over last year's champions, the Republic of Korea. Now, what that means is Hungary go right.